Hello everyone, welcome to another Illustrator CS6 tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to change the attributes of the stroke that you put onto your object. The stroke panel, which is if you go to window and then you come here to stroke, has a bunch of different options that you can use. So click on this, uh, the options part, and go to show options. And we're going to have all these options that we're able to use. We have the option to change the weight of our stroke. The uh, We can change the alignment of a stroke on the path. We can change um, how the ends of the stroke um, are. It could be round. It could be square. And I'll go over all that stuff with you. So the first thing, we've got a few things here. This is a line segment with a stroke of nine points. So all I did was use the line segment tool. This is a circle with a stroke on it of also six points. And this is text with uh, a stroke on it of two points. Now, move, move this over here so I can see. Let's start out with this circle here. Let's start out with the weight over here then. We can choose from a bunch of different weights. If I set it at one, that's the basic. It's just one pixel wide. If I come out to like nine, oh, make sure it's selected and then go to nine, it's going to be a lot fatter. So that's depending on what you want. And as you can see on the blue line is our path. That's where the original circle ends up. The, the actual uh, bluish green part of the circle, that's where it actually goes out to. So the stroke goes out from the middle of this path and comes out from both sides. That's how we have it set up right now, at least. The next thing we've got here is cap. So I'm going to come over here to this line segment and click on it. Then we're going to mess with the caps. We can use a rounded cap. And now if we look at this line segment, it now has rounded edges. Kind of like how the stick man is in those stick man fights. And then we also have projecting cap. If I click on that, it's also it's square. Or, But the, uh, the thing about the projecting cap is that it goes out past the path. The butt cap is what this one is called. That goes right to the edge of the cap, uh, right to the edge of the path. As you can see, if you look at the blue line in the path. All right, now we know those. Let's check it out on the text. Let's do rounded, and you can't really tell anything with that. And here's projecting. Eh, not much is going on with the with the text, as you can see. So what should we use? Let's try with corner here. If we go, this is miter join. This one is rounded join. I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll zoom in on the text. Especially look here where this K, end of this K is. Where, where my mouse is. If I click back on it, and then I hit round join, you can see that the end caps are a little bit more round. Now if I go to bevel join, they come off at like they get cut off at an angle like a square. Same with the side of this E and everything like that. Now you guys can probably see the difference here. Alright, let me zoom back out. I'm gonna just hit fit to screen. The other one we've got here is a line stroke, and I think that will probably be best shown on this circle here. If I hit the left one is this is going to align stroke to the center and this is what it's already doing it's the stroke is coming off from the left and the right or from both sides of this path if i hit align stroke to inside now the stroke is only coming out into the object if i hit align stroke to outside it's only going to come outside of the object so it's up to you what you want I'll just set it back to the middle. Another thing we've got is dashed line. So let me grab this line here. Let me click on dashed line. We can set up the dashes and gaps if we want to. These are um, these ones here. 
preserves exact dash and gap lengths, and this one aligns dashes to corners. So it's up to you what you want to use. But as you can see, the dashes on this aren't exactly symmetrical all the time. This one's all skinny, and these ones are longer. So you can set up your dash the length here. So if I set this to like just like two point, it's going to be a bunch of dash lines. And then you can also put a, a gap and then another dash and then a gap in with it. So that's cool about the dash to lines. Got some arrowheads. You can make arrows at the ends. If I take off the dash line, there's how you make an arrow. And then I can make like a arrow end there. And there's how you make like that's an arrow. I don't know if it'll do it on the circle. I never actually tried. Yeah, it does. So if I wanted to make like a double circle arrow kind of thing. It doesn't look like it works both ways. But there you go. You can scale down the arrow. So it's not so big. Or all that stuff. Then you got the uh you can link. You can swap. And then you can also align to the end of the path or to the tip of the path. And that's all I'm going to be going over with the stroke. And now you know how to create arrows. You can adjust the stroke where it is. You have a lot more fine tuning to your stroke. So that's awesome. It also sounded kind of perverted. Let me make this end cap. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. So thanks for watching this, you guys. It was a uh, stroke is one of the things that's really nice with design. It's still in to use strokes. It helps bring out the color in objects and brings more emphasis on the edges and makes things more um, refined, I guess, and definitive. So thanks a lot for watching this one. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.